So today on Nation, we're talking about the tech in the industry, how it's changed, what things were like when there was no tech. Even if you're new or you're old in the industry, please stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on guys? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com and you are here. What is up? Thanks for taking a look around. If it's your first time here, take a look around. Hopefully this video is awesome, at least better than a cat video, and it's something you wanna go back and watch everything you possibly can. We have 130 some odd videos with like almost 100 hours of content. It comes out live every Friday, anywhere podcasts are available and on YouTube. Um, also, if you are one of the nation, one of the cool kids, somebody who watches every episode, most importantly, you order your supplies through me, shameless plug, what's going on? It is because of you that I got brand name floss. Thank you to the person who told me I could buy brand name floss, but high five to you guys. Uh, you guys are super, super loyal and I genuinely appreciate everything you do. Uh, if you wanna buy your supplies through me, if you wanna be one of the nation or one of the cool kids, my number directs 862-312-2026. Doesn't cost you any extra to put your order in through me and uh, pressure washing window clean, check it out, windowcleaner.com. And there you go. Another quick message, go ahead and follow me everywhere you possibly can. Facebook, YouTube, everything. I have private channels and we're putting out a lot of content there too. So there you go. A couple quick shout outs. I want to say what's up to John Young, Kyle Husner, 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 Husner. I mess your name up every single time. What's going on? Uh, also, Larry Allen, what's up? Just a couple of the cool kids. If you don't know those guys, take your picture with them. They are the cool kids in the industry and they're going super, super far. So, but today we're talking about tech. We're talking about like technological advancements in the industry. And I have somebody super awesome, somebody who actually knows what they're talking about when it comes to tech, Mr. Michael Draper. What's going on, man? Hey, what's happening? Uh, that's, that's very generous lead in there, but uh, I don't know if I know exactly what's going on, but uh, I know a little something about something. Well, there you go. You have, you, okay. So if people don't know, you've created, uh, tell us a little bit about what you've created and how long it's taken since you've created it and where you've gotten so far. Because I feel like out of everything that's in the industry, it, I mean, you've seen it from the inside, so it seems like it's taken forever, but it seems like this has just been so fast for you to get to where you are, to where these ideas are just coming to life. Just tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, on the, a lot of, obviously a lot of people know me from American window cleaning magazine. And of course we kind of brought that to the technological age of, uh, of, you know, the magazine, the print, we still print a lot of magazines by the way, but, um, yeah. uh, we, we probably send out in the mail about 800 every issue, but, uh, um, we have brought that to the technological side and, and, you know, doing videos and, and content creation, much like yourself, but, uh, on the safety side, expert safety services, um, that, uh, you know, we've really tried to um, bring technology to the forefront for a couple different reasons. One, um, they, you know, everybody's using it, right? So everybody's using their phones and they're using video and all those things. So uh, to try to bring technology to the forefront in that area, it's just kind of a no brainer. Yeah. And then also um, traditional trainings, um, they don't always meet the timelines or the budget or, or whatever. So, I mean, everybody would love to have a trainer come in and, and train their people, but uh, either it's not cost effective or um, it just uh, it may, probably even more than that is, is the fact that we have kind of a revolving door with employees. Yeah. And so, you know, you go out, I've done it several times. I go out and do a training and uh, maybe we train 40 people at a company and then they hire five guys afterwards. They're like, hey, what do we do about these five guys? And so we're trying to utilize technology to help bridge that gap uh, between those two things. Nice. Yeah, and if people don't know from you, you own a window cleaning company. You decided that uh, just like a lot of us have, you got out of that and then you got into doing kind of sales and realized that there was this kind of, I don't want to say it was lacking because there's a lot of uh, you know information out there, but there wasn't like, you hit a niche that, that is so underserved that I really do think that that's been a heck of a, a, a reason that you've kind of grown as much as you have. Yeah. I mean, no doubt about it. They um, I've, I've watched this industry. Uh, Josh, I started in this industry when I was 16 and I'm 47 now. 
so yeah, I, I own my own company. You know, we did everything from residential work up to high rise. We had about 16 guys in our glory uh, in a lot of the, the summer months. I'm in a winter state. So, um, but yeah, in 14, we sold that company uh, very successfully. And um, yeah, I did see a, a niche. I, I was watching uh, things for several years, watching how safety was going to play in our industry. Um, I sat through a lot of committee meetings with the IWCA and I-14 as it was going through its uh, problems there at the end. But I just seen that, uh, hey, that, you know, there's not, uh, you know, the IWCA does a great job, don't get me wrong, but there just wasn't somebody out there just like blazing the trail uh, so far as compliance or making the necessary tools available so that guys could be compliant. It was yeah. just kind of stale. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I've seen an opportunity. Um, I have the background in the industry, and so we put two and two together. Well, nice. Well, being that you've been in the industry for so stinking long, you know what it was like before there was like tech, right? And for some of the new guys out there don't know even what an email group was. And we talked about this just a little while ago, but the email group, Gary Maurer was kind of a pioneer in the uh, information side, and he had an email group where you'd want to ask a question you'd have to type out an email and send it to basically everybody. You would send it out to like this list and then everybody would get the email and then you would see all the responses. And it was like a reply all almost thing. So it was super slow to get info and you didn't know who was sending your info. So if you said, Hey, can I tie this kind of knot or can I, you know, do I have to be six feet or 10 foot away from the edge? Like somebody would, you get 30 answers from people who just mysteriously didn't know who they were. Yeah, you really didn't. Now, one thing he did do good is he made you sign the email, right? Sign yeah. the, the name and company name. So that was good that you can, yeah. you can kind of do a little bit of research. But um, yeah, it was it was slow. And I mean, even before that, uh, you know, I think so it had been if I go back, it would have been around 89, 88, 89 is when I started in the business. And so there, yeah, there wasn't even that there wasn't e even an email form, really. It was, you know, there was you a just janitorial learned. company in your city and that was where you got all your information, your everything. Yeah. 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 And, and we, we learned from, I mean, we just picked up the business, me and a buddy, we learned from his dad and, and uh, we worked his routes and got into residential as well. But yeah, it was just kind of like, we didn't know what we didn't know. We just, we did. And you know, we made money, but uh, yeah, there wasn't this technological side it wasn't all this information that's for sure maybe that was a good thing i don't know <laughs> well there you go like you said you didn't you didn't know what you didn't know so yeah so but now we have groups that's one big one is like forums and facebook groups and well forums kind of dying too forums when they came out it really just changed like i don't want to send the email group stuff anymore i got i'm going to go to this forum where it's almost instant i could see kind of pictures and clickables and everything else and even more so now with Facebook groups, Facebook groups have really taken over where you can click on somebody's profile picture who commented to see really what they are. And then they, of course, tag their business that they're part of. You can search their business and you really kind of, can, you know, basically figure out who's saying this stuff a little bit easier that way. But it's accelerated learning so fast. Now, if you're not in any groups, go to uh, Pro Window Cleaning on Facebook or Pro Window Cleaning Newbies or pressure washing resource. If you're in the pressure washing side of things, there's a lot of really good Facebook groups out there. Now, I have to preface that. Now, when you have a lot of people in a group and it's Facebook, there's a lot of trolls out there too. So you're gonna hear, you gotta, you gotta sift through what's worth it and what's not and, and uh, that. But it really is on a technological side, just so much information out there. It's What they say is now it's more about the question you ask, not, that you can ask the question. We have any any answer we ever want. Yeah, it's true. And you know, the, it's kind of you look back at things, and in some ways, you know, it, you're almost a little bit jealous because it's like um, we had to go out and learn the hard way, right? Yeah. We had to we had to fail at something three times, or you know, to figure out that oh, yeah, this don't work. And now, you know, you can kind of get that answer instantaneously. Yeah, But the drawback to that, too, is that there is a lot of information out there and all of it's not correct. Yeah. And the, the reality is, is that there's a lot of guys and I, I don't hate on anybody, but there's it's just the reality. There's a lot of guys out there that, you know, they've been in the business maybe a short period of time. They're given expert advice. Um, some information is just straight out wrong. 
Yeah. Um, so on the safety side, I deal with this all the time. Just, you know, stuff that people have picked up or that maybe it did work for them, but it doesn't meet compliance regulations. It's, it's wrong. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, you just have to, uh, you know, I'll take this to a safety term. OSHA uses a term that when you're training somebody, it needs to be training from somebody that's qualified. And, you know, you really want to sort through that. I mean, is the advice I'm taking, uh, there's a lot of advice out there, but is it, is it qualified? Does the guy know what he's talking about? Does he have some basis for what he's saying? And, um, you know, oftentimes, uh, oftentimes it's not the case, unfortunately. There's, there's a lot of guys out there giving information that uh, maybe haven't even got it all figured out themselves. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are more... Uh they're more interested in hearing themselves talk than what they're saying out there. And, and that's yeah. very true. Now, now kind of going on that same thing, you not only in the safety programs that you've had and the training that you do, you actually created an app for the industry too, right? Yeah, I did. So um, we were doing trainings all over. And uh, one of the things that we were really focused in on is, is a, that OSHA has a, a saying called plan, provide and train. And they have a little logo. And uh, they spent a great deal of time explaining to people, writing pamphlets and things about the job hazard analysis. Some people call them yeah, JHAs. Uh, some people refer to them as JSAs. But uh, JHA is how OSHA refers to it. And what I learned when we were doing these classes is we started talking about JHA, and I just started getting glazed eyed look, you know, in the class. I, I could just tell, yeah, they understood, but they weren't, they weren't getting it. They, they didn't understand how to write them. They didn't understand how they needed to be put together. And so I, I'm just a big one. I, 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 when I, when we're teaching something, if I, if I, my students can't go out and implement what we're teaching, then basically I failed as a teacher. And so we've seen this over and over and over again in the classes. So I, what I decided to do is put together this app that would allow a person to, because in our industry, the hazards, they repeat quite often. Yeah. Um, and so we know what the hazards are for the most part. So let's just put them in a series where we can allow a guy just to choose, does this hazard exist on this job site? And then we'll tell them what OSHA says about how to handle that hazard. And so that was the first piece of it was uh, the job hazard analysis. So we built that app. And, um, you know, we've, we're proud of it because we've had it tested a few times. And, and um, when I say tested, I mean, it's went up against regulatory agencies. We've, we've had accidents where that JJ was in play and, and OSHA come in and investigated. And, you know, our app stood. And so right. we're, we're, really, we're really proud of it. We spent a lot of time on it. Um, I mean, hours. You, know, you, you get a product done and it's like, oh, that's cool. I mean, that, that didn't take long, right? No, no, that took months and hours to put together. You know, it, it takes years to be an overnight yeah. success. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so we've got that piece and then um, we're still developing in that app and we're giving more and more features and benefits. So one of the things that's really cool is a lot of guys get lost in the OSHA 1910 document is like 589 pages of glory. Fun, and uh, yeah. So, and, and most of it doesn't apply to what we do in our industry. And so what I did is I took all the subparts that did apply and, and I put, I create a resource section in that app. Nice. And so you can just go in there and easily find ladders, uh, rope, rope descent systems, uh, aerial lifts, whatever it is that applies to us, it's there and it's broken yeah. out for you. So the resources section of that is really cool and it's free of charge to download, by the What's way. What's the name of that app? Again? It's the JHA safety app and it can be found in either the Google store or the Apple store. Nice. Um, and then the, by, the real, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, which by the way, uh, tech wise to get all that information before you would, I mean, you'd have to go to your public library to get the published OSHA documents and then weed through that. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or online you can go through it. You can, you can get it online, but it's like I said, it's just so many subparts and so many, yeah. Uh, things to read where this is just really at your fingertips, which is the world we live in. Yeah. So, and then the second piece we put in that resource section was uh, OSHA wants our industry and several industries, if we're dealing with chemicals to have SDS logs, so safety data sheets. And the reason they want it is because if somebody goes out there and gets uh, something in their eye, then if you're calling first responders or somebody like that, they need to know what the chemical is, what its makeup is, what's the first aid procedures on it. 
And so they said for years, well, just have this log on the book with all the chemicals that you would you know, possibly need and have them in alphabetical order so they're easily accessible. Yeah. Well, books are cumbersome, right, in the field. And, and so we decided, again, most of the chemicals that we use repeat. We all use Dawn or we all use GG4 or we all use Agent Clean or we all use, you know, Titan Labs, whatever. So we just took the whole industry logbook of SDSs and we put it in the app. Nice. So, and we, we alphabetized it so that uh, basically it's all at your fingertips. So now if there's a first aid problem in the field with any of the chemicals, any employee can have access to it in just seconds, just by tapping on whatever. And we've opened it up to our clients to say, Hey, if we miss something, we try to do a really good job of finding all the chemicals uh, that were out there. And the ones that we use as window cleaners and pressure washers, but Hey, if we miss something, let us know, we'll add it. Oh. And uh, so, and that's also free of charge. So any employee that's got it on their phone knows the OSHA can access the OSHA standards and has an SDS logbook at their fingertips. And let's talk. The big question is: Is that compliant? Because we're all scared of OSHA now. Them having that app does that mean they have what they need legally? Absolutely. So um, what we're what primarily we're concerned with when it concerns OSHA with SDS sheets is, and we always teach this in the class, it's section four and section eight. And it's universal on every single SDS sheet. Section four is going to be the first aid. And that's the primary thing that we're worried about because if there is an exposure to the chemical, how can the employee get first aid? Or if it's a first responder that has to respond because he's inhaled bleach or whatever it is, yeah. then how does the first responder respond? and what first aid measures are there. And then the second piece is section eight. And so section eight is the PPE requirements for the chemical in the first place. So the employee really should know four and eight automatically so that one, uh, they know what PPE they're supposed to wear. And oh, by the way, if anything does happen, here's the first aid requirements. So all of that's there. Um, it's just at their fingertips. And it's certainly a lot easier than keeping up with logbook. We're keeping up for you. Yeah, and what uh, everybody who's listening who has employees will understand that every one of your employees has their phone with them all the time. That's what they're doing most of the day, right? So it's nice That's to it. have it all right there. But the big thing is, is that if you do have a book or you you have or you don't have the information at all, it's not about the compliance side of it, which is the scariest part for all of us. It's about that you actually need to use it. What if you actually need to know where the hazards are, or you know what? Can't, what it's causing you know if you're going into distress for some reason what's causing that like to actually be able to use this is the more important part than just being even compliant yeah absolutely and the the thing is too what we, we i always talk about it's, it's a mobile contractor model that we're all running right it's two guys in a truck and probably if they are going to have some exposure to chemicals then it's it's not might not necessarily be at the truck it yeah. may be, you know, at the house or in the house or whatever. And so to have to run all the way back to the truck to get the SDS log when there's a water faucet maybe in the house that they could flush their eye with yeah. is counterproductive. So yeah. this allows them to have everything they need on them. And like you said, everybody's carrying their phone anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, here's another one. Uh, we both were at this uh, particular event that just happened, but events is another thing that really has taken shape with tech. I mean, you now have your entire calendar on your phone. People are buying tickets digitally. They're showing up to something that they've never met anybody to. The technology, you can see the, the, the schedule of classes and the uh, presenters as they come in. Events used to be a lot more kind of black and white as far as how things have gone. And I really think the technology is really creeping into events. Even on the other side of seeing the back end of events, seeing the tech that will get implemented down the road from check-in on apps and just interactive apps and all of that stuff. It's absolutely amazing. No, it is. And just the, the exposure to these events too. I mean, you know, it seems like in this digital age, we're getting, you know, the, the huge convention, the IWCA, the PWNA, all these, these conventions and we're getting blasted with that information like a year in advance, right? Yeah. It used to be years ago. It's like, yeah, the IWCA is in February sometime. <laughs> it was the only I'll thing, get yeah. some, something in the mail in December. Yeah, it's like, whatever. Yeah. And, but now, you know, it's like all this enthusiasm is built all the time. And then, yeah, when you get there, it's the apps that are there and available to just track your, um, 
what you want to do and where you're going to be and and all this is just it's pretty phenomenal yeah now i want to talk about one thing that that mm-hmm. when, when window so the water fed poll which we'll get to in a second was the ultimate it's going to take our jobs when it came out but there is literally a window cleaning robot and window cleaning drones that exist is there do you think anything to kind of uh play into that or do you still think that that's just a kind of a neat concept (laughs) well i don't know that it's fully developed yet i mean the the concept is cool um and really for the same reasons that water fed poles are you know first come about in the uk and all this was because of safety issues right it was ladder ladder concerns and so whether it be you know just accessing heights or or whatever i mean i think there's that mentality of using technology to eliminate safety hazards yeah. it's a cool concept um you know with window cleaning we have um we have agitation scrubbing squeegeeing off and then people want somewhat of a crystal clear um you know, outlook on it, right? They, they, they want to be able to see through it and they don't want any spots and all this stuff. Yeah. So that's a harder thing to perfect than like they're using drones right now in the, in the agricultural industry to spray insecticides on fruit trees. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense because it's not a spot free result that they're looking for. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not anti it at all. It's just, uh, you know, I think it needs some more development and, yeah. um, that you know they've had the the window cleaning machines that'll go up the buildings and stuff on the right buildings and hey some of them work they work very well on the right buildings they yeah. just, they're not universal for every building but um i think you'll you'll continue to see i think there's guys that are you know continuing to want to develop that especially with the drones yeah. um, but uh, a lot of, and a lot of guys are using them now they're using drones for uh inspections uh, gutter inspections uh, roof inspections yeah uh, so yeah, no doubt that that's going to continue to develop and the advancements will continue to be made too. Yeah. And because we're this far in the episode and, uh, <clears throat> Chris doesn't watch these, we were literally a conversation away from getting, uh, to be a distributor for the, one of the roof cleaning, um, drones that, uh, we had everything to the point of, okay, now we need to just schedule and we decided against it because it's a big, big, big investment for people to get into that. But that's a uh, roof cleaning drones. It's just a, a drone that can shoot stuff on the roof. So, I mean, it's all there, but you still have to have somebody watering and somebody running the drone. You're only having right. the tech to create a safer space. Like pure water creates faster. It doesn't take jobs away. It just makes you able to work faster and safer. That's the same thing with some of these where the window cleaning robot that, if anybody knows this, it's this big like car wash spinning thing that goes up and down a building. It's like $40,000 and it's, uh, you know, again, in the right case, it might work, but it takes I would like three people to run the thing that does the work of one. So it's technically slower, but is it safer? You know, high rise done properly is pretty safe, safer than being even on a ladder. So there's some of the stuff that kind of comes and bounces into the, the, the industry. And keep in mind, I always say this, everybody who is in the industry thinks this industry is huge. It is not. There's, you know, we are such a, small spec on these people's scales like IPC and Unger and all these companies who are just global and then they do window cleaning, you know? So it's, yeah. it's more amazing to see some of the innovation that come and it is, it's for safety. A lot of this stuff that's coming is just safety based. It is. And, and, and not to be dismissed though, is the other side of it. So, you know, when you talk about the window cleaning machines and, you know, it takes three guys to operate, one guy can go down the building. Um, that that's part of it. And, and a big part but the other thing too is is the labor shortage yeah and so you know if i can if i can use a drone if i can send one guy out to use a drone to spray something or you know i know when we had our company we did a big college campus here in central illinois and it came every year and it came every year in june they wanted 42 buildings uh cleaned on the outside only and you know quite truthfully it was kind of a uh it was a pain. I mean, it was good money, but it was a pain to schedule, pain to do. And so we, we would literally, we used the technology of the water fed, not because necessarily it even produced a better result or that was not even a consideration. It was that I could take um, some guys out of, uh, you know, a labor pool um, and just 
basically give them a couple days training on the equipment and send them out and we could get that job done. And uh, so labor wise, sometimes these technologies help to help to face too. I, everywhere I go, I travel over the country. Uh, I hear this labor shortage. You can't find guys, can't find guys, can't find guys. Well, how do you, and, how do you uh, compute, compete against $17 an hour to pull boxes off a shelf at Amazon and you, right. you know, do you, can you walk? That's their question of, far as there's no college or anything you don't have to work outside there's no bugs there's no rain there's perfect temperatures i mean i can't you can't necessarily fault the the newest generation for wanting to take a, that job work smarter not harder but yeah we was in uh, we was in orlando last week and we went, went into a restaurant and i uh, had my family there and we walked in the door and i can look at scan the restaurant and it's it's half empty Wow. And they look at us and say, it'll be a 45 minute wait. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, it'll be a 45 minute wait. And I said, well, we're not going to wait 45 minutes. We went to the next place, but we were sitting at the next place wondering what would cause that? Why, why would you, your, your place is half empty. What would cause you to have a 45 minute wait? Well, the only thing that that can be is they don't have enough servers. Yeah. Yeah. They so they, they, <laughs> they can't keep enough servers uh, in, in the house to, to basically service the customers. So they got 45 minute waits on a half empty restaurant. Man, if I was an owner, that would just oh. fry me. You know, when they calculate in restaurants, they calculate square footage on turn, like turning tables, like how fast they get people out. And like, this is what we should be able to produce. And if you just basically, it's like that, whatever restaurant you went into having a building that's half the size, because yeah. now they have, you know, and if they have the kitchen staff to still provide with the servers can't, but that's the industry. I don't, I don't, I don't see that side of things ever getting better necessarily it may change a little but i don't see it getting all that much better with with everything else that's out there yeah probably not not for a while um the best hope that i think we have in the industry is it's the rules of supply and demand and so if the if the demand continues to be high like it is right now all over the country and the supply chain is lower and people can't get work done it should drive costs yeah. Um, to me, it's a perfect time right now to, to drive cost because, um, it just, the, it's, the demand is out there and the supply is short. And so just the rules of business says that means that the price should go up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell us one more time what their apps are called, uh, how to get them and all that. Yeah. So JHA safety app is the, uh, application on the phone that's in the Google store, or Apple store. Um, so that's, that's the one that's got the SDS, the JHA, uh, the job hazard analysis. And then the final one too, that we've got that, uh, we didn't really mention before was the safety advocate program. Yeah. And, um, that was really created for, uh, small, smaller guys or guys that have, uh, maybe even large, large employee sets, but they, they're only going to train once a year. Um, and then they're going to hire people in addition. So what we did is we took all the, the trainings that we do out in the field. We videoed them. We put testing together with them, and uh, we are, we're now, you can sit in your office and assign employees to take the different classes that we offer. We yeah. offer the same certificates um, that uh, we do in the field, carry cards and certificates. They're all backed by the IWCA, PWNA, and Expert Safety Services, and um, it's just a really cool program that gives, uh, you know, it's affordable then to everybody. So again, we're using technology um, to get training and safety out there so that guys can utilize it, be compliant, and not have to pay an arm and leg traveling all over the place to get the trainings or have somebody come in. Yeah, and these are companies who maybe you have two employees where things are just going great, but yet you don't have the cheddar to have somebody like you fly out to train them. Now you're allowing, it's the concept of Tesla coming out with a cheaper and cheaper and cheaper cars that eventually they want everybody to have one. That's this. Now there's no excuse to not be trained properly because it's just, it's available. It's all right there. Yeah. And, and literally, I mean, I, I do, I mean, we, we, this is what we do for a living. So obviously we, we make money, but um, my overall idea is that we can have the industry have access to safety at, at affordable rates. And I mean, literally in the advocate program and it's, it's a membership driven program. So it's one ninety nine a year, but it buys your training costs down in half. So literally when we go out and do OSHA 1910, for instance, it's, we generally charge 149 a person. As an advocate, now you're, you're buying that same class in your office for $69. Wow. So $69 a person, it's very affordable. 
And then our other programs too, ladder safety, uh, water fed safety, uh, rooftop safety, and then respirator safety as well. Um, you know, I, the cost of them is that you, you, you certainly won't fly me around or any other safety instructor probably uh, for those costs. I mean, oh, no. just, just can't. Yeah. And so uh, that's, that's what's really nice about it. So again, uh, the app using technology there to bring things right to the technician, uh, expertsafetyservices.com using a website and an LMS system to be able to bring safety training to you at affordable costs. Um, yeah, we just really believe that embracing technology is, is the way it's going to be in the future. That's it. And that's the thing. If you guys are out there and you're fighting either water fed or the safety technology side of things or any of the tech stuff in our industry, don't wait it out. Don't be that guy who's now 60 years old who said, and this, he just talked to me like two weeks ago. So I'm not picking on you, sir. <laughs> But he said, uh, I thought all my life I would be the one I could just get away with technology. It wasn't for me. I didn't want it. And now he's got nothing. He can't figure out anything. And he's dialing on like a, you know, a, a prepaid style phone that just has buttons. You know, like you can't avoid it forever because it's just becoming so much more ingrained in all of our societies and how we do business. And it's making people successful. So you kind of have to get on board, really. Yeah. And here's the cool thing. We had a really neat story. Um, and you probably a lot of your listeners uh, know them, but uh, uh, Feba Vandermeer down in Dallas, he calls me up and it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. He says, Hey, it's raining in Dallas and I need a guy. I need to be able to get a guy trained today. Ocean 1910. I'm like, no problem. Go, go become an advocate. And I said, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to, once you're an advocate, you'll be able to go in buy the ocean 1910 class, send it off to your employee via email. He should be able to take it, test it. And he calls me back and four hours later and says, we've got our certificate. We've got our guy trained. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so that's just how easy it is. And we spent, Josh, we spent thousands of dollars in coding to make sure that this was literally click a button, click a button, click a button. And it's just that fast gotta be how, easy how everything easy. rolls. It is, it is incredibly easy. I'm shocked at our tech guys. And I'm not, I'm not those guys, but they, <laughs> they did a really good job uh, yeah. coding all that out for us. Uh. That's awesome. That's awesome. I appreciate you kind of spending some time. Um, check it all out. It literally is cutting edge stuff that is going to make you smarter. It's going to make you safer. It's going to make your employees safer. And it's going to make you not have to pay big fines if anything does happen with the four letter word that I'm not going to mention. But uh, go and check that out. Uh, and I definitely appreciate you guys hanging out. If you are uh, somebody who is here for the first time, like I said, if you like what you see, check it all out binge it all text me and tell me you like it or text me you hate it i don't care 862-312-2026 if i can do anything for you questions answered help you with business or most importantly getting supplies ordered again 862-312-2026 is my number that is a sell so call me text me people put stuff in their cart all night and then they just text me like yo jersey put it in i definitely appreciate all you guys high five to you um, and yeah, until we talk again next week, go out there and be happy.